Are we pissing our pants yet? Because it's going to be PP Pants City here real soon. That's right. Today we are playing another battle report, but we're going to be playing through the Eeny Meeny Miny Mo scenario. So here Negan's got all of the survivors lined up, and when we play through this, at the beginning of each turn, we're going to roll and see who Negan takes a swing at. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of the board. So here's the rest of the board. And we can see that we've got Negan with Carl, Rick, Maggie, Sophia, Glenn, and Michonne in front of him. Then we've got the Saviors behind him. And we all know how from the comics and even the TV show, this scenario plays out. Negan's got these guys right here. And there's nothing they can do except watch. But what if there are some more survivors from Rick's group and they were on this side of the board and they had to cross over and stop Negan. That's what we're going to do here. So you can use the timestamps below to jump ahead to get right into the action if you want to or you can stick around and we'll talk about the characters and some of the other rules that are going to come into play here. Alright, so as you saw from there, we have a ton of survivors that we're going to play through in this game. We're going to have Negan, the Saviors, Ezekiel, Jesus, Shiva, Heath, and then potentially even the group that's over there in front of Negan, if any of them are able to survive. So what we're going to have to do is take any members from this side, with Heath and Jesus and so forth, get them across the board, come into contact with anyone from this group over here, and then at that point, all of those characters are going to become live and we can play as them as well. Before that, all they can do is sit there and get beat on by Negan. So this game is going to last for 10 turns or until the threat tracker reaches maximum. And in this game, it's going to start on one. There are going to be five supply tokens, one in each of the tree sections, one on top of the RV, one on top of those shipping containers, and then one over here in front of the billboard. Now instead of going over every survivor that's on the board and telling you what they're armed with and what version of the character they are, I'm just going to flash a screenshot up there and it's going to be a shot of the table with the character cards laid out. Feel free to pause it, take a look at it. I'll explain who has what and what they're armed with as we get through their turns. So let's go ahead and we're going to start turn one and it's going to be with Negan taking a swing at one of these survivors. All right, so you can see our threat tracker is set to one, and we're gonna go ahead and roll double blue. So now we're gonna go ahead and advance Lucille four times. And very fittingly, we're gonna land on Glenn. And we're not gonna wait for the melee phase, we're gonna resolve this right away. So Negan is gonna be attacking with a blue as his base melee, and he gets double white for Lucille. And if he rolls a headshot on any of these, we're going to add an additional white die to this roll. So Negan only manages to roll three successes. Now we're going to roll for Glenn's defense. And any of the defense that these characters are going to use is going to be unmodified. So it's just whatever's printed on their card. So Glenn is going to roll a single white die in defense. So Glenn rolled a blank there, and he takes the full brunt of that attack. He suffers three damage and is left with two hit points left. All right, now we're really going to come over here to this side of the table and start our first official survivor turn. So we're going to take Heath and have him run eight inches up there closer to the RV. And that noise from the run is going to draw in the closest walker to him, which will be the guy there in the suit. And now over here to the saviors. We're going to start out with Dwight, and we're going to be playing the saviors using the solo rules that Mantic put out. So Dwight being a marksman, he's going to want to sneak into a position where he can take a shot at a survivor. So we're going to go ahead here and sneak Dwight a couple inches over to get a pretty clear shot at Jesus right there. Alright, and Dwight is going to have a white as his base shooting. And then he is armed with a Browning Safari Rifle, which adds another blue to his shooting. So we're going to go ahead and roll for that. And Dwight only manages to roll a three. So we're going to go ahead and now roll for Jesus in his defense. And he gets a red and a white 
as his base defense. All right, so Jesus rolls a two and he takes one point of damage, leaving him with four remaining. And the solo rules say that all, that all marksmen have silencers on their rifles. So instead of creating mayhem, we're only gonna create noise. So the threat tracker is not going to go up and we're only gonna move in the closest walker to Dwight. So that only brings in that single walker. All right, and then now that we're back over here, we are gonna take a hold of Jesus and have him also run eight inches directly towards the RV, right up there next to Heath, and we're gonna bring in the walker right next to Jesus, over into contact with him. And now back around here, we're gonna move over to Tara. Tara being a runner is gonna to wanna to try and get the closest supply counter to her. So like we said, we got one over here in these trees. So Tara is gonna go ahead and make a run action to get over there to that green book bag. She's got plenty of distance to get all the way over there to it. And the walker up here in the green hat is gonna be within 10 inches of her. So he's gonna move because of the noise that she made during a run action. So he's gonna shamble six inches down towards her. She's gonna go ahead and use her second action now to search the book bag. And Tara is gonna come up with some horse pills. So we'll go ahead and throw these in her pack. All right, next up for the good guys, we're gonna go and take Ezekiel and have him also eight inch run up here into the middle of the board and pull in the closest walker to him. And now over here, we'll slide over to Sherry. And Sherry being a support character is gonna to wanna to buddy up with someone and continue to help them throughout the game. So Sherry is of course going to wanna to help out Dwight. So she's gonna make a run action over to help him in combat. So Sherry charges over to come into contact with this walker and that's also going to draw in the closest walker to her because she made noise to go try and help out Dwight, which is then going to bring the guy in the green hat over just a little bit closer. And then our last survivor on this side is Shiva, and she's going to run up here next to Ezekiel and take on the old man walker. She's actually going to run up there right behind him and then draw that guy over. So we wind up with this clump of melee combat over here. We still got a couple of saviors left on this side of the board over here to activate, so we're gonna go to Lara. And Lara being a tactician, she's gonna wanna play the objective, which here is to keep anyone from coming into contact with Negan's group of folks in front of him that he's just trying to beat on. So Lara's gonna use her action to come down closer to them, and then she's armed with a pistol. She can set a guard right there and then shoot at any of Ezekiel's team that tries to come around the side of the RV. So she's gonna go ahead and use a single sneak action to slide down here and kind of set up camp. That's gonna leave us with John, and John being a bruiser is gonna to wanna to run him around to try and engage someone in combat. So he's gonna make a run action around the back side of this RV and get as close as he can to the folks on this side, which he's gonna get into about right here, and then that's gonna attract the lady in the skirt next to him. And that is gonna be all of our survivor actions for the first turn. We'll go ahead here and check out some kill zones. After kill zones, the only thing that really happened is we're gonna have the walker in the green hat slide around there into contact with Dwight. All right, so we're gonna go ahead here to our first event card now. And we come up with the trap card. So all threat levels, the player with initiative must choose one survivor inside or within three inches of the woods. That model sets off a bear trap or a hunting snare. Roll the black die. Uh, on a badge, the model instantly takes number of wounds equal to the roll of a blue die. On a blank, the model loses an action in its next activation. So we have Tara, who is in contact with the woods. So let's go ahead and roll for her. So now we'll go ahead and roll the blue die and then Tara's gonna take that much damage. All right, so Tara takes one wound and she has three remaining. So we're gonna go ahead and up the threat by one to two and start the melee phase. And so we have the most melee going one over here, so we'll start with this. And we're gonna have Jesus against one walker. All right, and so over here, we're gonna have Jesus who has a blue as his base melee, and his special rule says martial artist. It's gonna give him an extra white die in melee combat when he is not equipped with a melee weapon. So we're gonna have a blue and a white for him against a single purple for the one walker. and he just manages to tie combat. So we'll move that walker back an inch and he stays standing 
And now we'll come over to Heath against a single walker. Now Heath in combat is supposed to be a killing machine. He has two red as his base melee, and then he's equipped with probably my new favorite weapon in All Out War, and that is the Gator Pro. That also gives him an additional two red dice in melee combat for four red dice in total. The Gator Pro has the sharp special rule, so we went ahead and gave Heath the Stab Veteran skill, which is going to allow him to reroll any of these four dice if he wants to, or all of them. And he's going to be rolling all of those against a single purple for this one walker. So we're going to go ahead and reroll two of the red dice. Alright, so we're looking for a headshot on one of these. Alright, well we really talked him up for nothing there. Heath just manages to knock that walker back an inch and prone. And now we'll come over here to Ezekiel against a single walker. Ezekiel in combat, this is the wave 6 version of him. So he's going to have two red as his base melee. And he's armed with his signature cane which gives him an additional white, and if we roll a headshot, we get to add in another red. That against one walker, so we roll one purple for them. Alright, and someone is finally able to get rid of a walker there, so Ezekiel rolls the headshot, and we pull that walker from play. Now we're going to skip over to John, and have John take on a single walker here. John in combat is a tank. He is going to have a single white as his base melee, but then he's going to be armed with the felling axe, which gives him an additional two white to that. So we have three white dice in total against a single purple for one walker. So he makes short work of that walker, and they are removed from play. Now we'll come to Shiva against a single walker here. Shiva in combat is going to be rolling a blue and red as her base melee. She does have the sharp special rule, but that's not going to make any difference with a walker. And we're going to have one purple die for the walker. So Shiva's going to go ahead and knock that walker back an inch and prone. And now for a follow-up action, we're going to use her Furious Assault special rule, which says that once per turn, if she wins melee combat, she may immediately move into base contact with a new standing enemy within 6 inches of her, and she can then resolve that combat immediately, even if the other person has already fought. So now she's going to go out of combat with the walker, bounce into combat with John. So now that John has already fought once in melee combat, he has to defend here. So Shiva is still going to be attacking with her blue and red as her base. And then John is going to be defending with a red and a white. So we'll go ahead and roll her attack first. And she gets four successes. So now we'll roll his defense. So Shiva rolls four successes, John rolls three, so that's one point of damage, plus the headshot, it's going to be two, and she has the sharp keyword, so now we get to roll the 50-50 die to see if a third point of damage is going to be inflicted. So now here on the badge, we're going to inflict an extra point of damage because of the sharp special rule. If not, we're just going to go ahead and do two points of damage. So Shiva wins combat there. She does two points of damage to John, leaving him with three remaining, and we move him back one inch. So now we come around over here, and we're going to have Sherry against a single walker. Sherry in combat has a red as her base, and she's armed with a hatchet, which gives her an extra red against one purple. And she's going to tie combat, so we're just going to go ahead and move that guy back an inch, and he's going to stay standing. And that'll leave us with Dwight against a single walker to end this melee phase. So now we got Dwight against a single walker. Dwight's going to choose to defend here, only because his defense value is better than his melee attack. In defense, he's going to roll one white die against a single purple for the walker. So 
so Dwight successfully defends himself, and we move that walker back an inch. That's going to be all of our combat. we got a couple prone walkers over here on this side of the board, so now we'll go to the end phase, roll for these guys, and see if they stand back up. So we're going to go ahead and roll the 50-50 die, and on a badge, that walker is going to stay prone, and on a blank, they're going to stand back up. So we'll start with the walker in the suit, and now the walker that Shiva knocked down. So both of those guys are going to stay prone. That's going to be the end of turn one. We'll up the threat by one because of solo play to three. And go ahead to turn two. Alright, so turn two. The threat has moved up to three. And before we go ahead and have Negan roll his blue dice to figure out who he's going to hit, why don't you guys go down there and hit that subscribe button. You know you're liking this battle report and you want to see more, so make sure you subscribe and you don't miss out on them. So we roll another four, which is going to move Lucille around two. Maggie. So we'll go ahead and resolve this right now. So again, Negan is rolling one blue and two white. And Maggie in defense will be rolling two red. So somehow or another, Maggie comes out of that with no wounds. The saviors have the initiative this go-around, so we'll go around to them now. And for the saviors, we're going to start out with John. And remember, John being a bruiser, he's going to want to get into melee combat with the closest survivor to him. And he doesn't care that it's a tiger. So he sneaks right into combat with her. Over here on to Ezekiel's team, we're going to take Jesus and have him run straight down into Sherry. We've measured this out, and he's going to have enough distance to make it all the way into contact with her. So he charges 8 inches towards her, and that noise is going to pull in the closest walker over towards him. Alright, now we're going to move down here to Dwight. So we would want to take Dwight and probably move into contact with Sherry to help her out against Jesus. But instead, Dwight's a marksman, and he has to take a shot at the closest unengaged survivor. So, Jesus is engaged, Heath is the next closest... So we're going to have Dwight sneak over and then take a shot at Heath. So he goes ahead and sneaks over four inches, and now we're going to take a shot with his rifle. And Dwight shooting again is a white and a blue. Against Heath, who has a single white as his defense. So Dwight manages to inflict three wounds on Heath, who is now down to two wounds left, and that rifle has the stun keyword, so Heath is going to be knocked prone. And now speaking of Heath, we're going to go ahead and have him use his first action to stand back up, and for his second action, he's now going to charge at Dwight, moving the full eight inches and creating noise, which will in turn draw on that walker to Dwight. And now we'll come back here to Tara. Again, she's being a runner, so she wants to get to another supply counter. We've got the one over here on top of the storage containers. We're just going to say that they are generally inside of there. So as long as she can make contact with that storage container, she'll be able to search it. So she's going to go ahead and run over 8 inches into contact with that storage container. And that's going to bring in the closest walker to her, which is this guy here who winds up between her and Heath. We're going to go ahead and say that he's not in contact with that piece of scenery. So she is still able to now use her second action to search that supply marker. And this time around, she finds a Molotov cocktail. So we'll go ahead and put this in her pack as well. All right, so the threat tracker hasn't really been something we're worried about quite yet. We're still only at three and low threat, but that could get out of control at any time here. So Ezekiel is going to use one of his special rules, which is kingly, and he's going to use that to lower the threat by a blue die. So we'll drop the threat by one, back down to two. And then for his second action, of course he's going to go over and help out Shiva in melee combat against John. Alright, so for the saviors, that's going to leave us down here with Laura. She's our last person that we can activate. Now we got two things we can do with her. Remember, she's playing the objective, so we don't want Jesus to get past Sherry in this walker to make it in contact down here with any of these survivors. So she could shoot into that combat and have a one in three chance in hitting Jesus, or she can just charge into it and use her tire iron that she's equipped with and pile into that combat. 
So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have her run over there and jump into that melee combat. And by her doing that, it's going to help out Tara because that's going to pull in the closest walker who's just going to move into contact with Heath. All right, so that being all the survivor actions, you can see around the board here, most of the walkers are already tied up and the ones that aren't are basically prone. So we don't have anyone to check kill zones for. So we're gonna go right into our next event card. And it's going to be shooting at shadows. So plus one to the threat, we're gonna be back up to three. And all survivors with the nerve value lower than the current threat, which is no one, because we're only on low threat, must shoot the closest enemy model if they have a ranged weapon. Start the player with initiative and alternate, choosing a model and resolving the shoot action fully before moving to the next. In addition to each time a shot is result, white walkers enter play. If an eligible survivor has no functioning ranged weapon, it must run as if it had rolled a run on the panic die. So again, we have no one that this is going to affect, so we're just going to go ahead and add one to the threat level. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and increase the threat by one because of melee combat and start on the melee phase. And we're going to go ahead down here with this cluster and have Heath started out against one walker. Alright, so again, Heath is rolling four purple dice that are re-rollable against one walker's purple die. Alright, so that walker is extremely dead. We'll go over here to Dwight against a single walker now. And just like last time, we're going to have Dwight just defend himself. So, white die in defense against purple die for the walker. Alright, so Dwight actually loses combat there by one. So, he is down to three wounds left, and he has moved back an inch. Alright, and that's going to leave us with Jesus against both Sherry and Lara and one walker. All right, so in this combat here, we're gonna have the walker with a single red die. Sherry will have a white and a red, as well as Lara, one white and one red. So we're gonna roll the attack first, and then I'll explain what Jesus is gonna roll in defense. All right, so between all of them, they roll four successes. So Jesus, by default, is going to have a red and a white as his base defense, and then because he moved over five inches, he has a special rule called moving target, which is going to give him an extra blue die in his defense pool. And he has the leather coat body armor, which allows him to reroll any blanks when making melee defense rolls. So he has red, white, and blue, and they are rerollable. So we're going to go ahead and reroll the red die, because it's a blank. Alright, so after all that, Jesus is going to lose combat, be moved back an inch, and he loses one wound down to three left over. Then we come on to this side of the table, and we're going to have John against both Ezekiel and Shiva. Alright, so because of the overlapping colors in the dice here, we're going to go ahead and roll these one at a time. Now we're going to have Ezekiel start out. He's going to roll two red and one white, and if there's a headshot, we get to add in an extra red die. So now for the extra red. So he's going to roll a total of three successes. And now for Shiva, again, she has blue and red as her base melee. All right, so that's going to be seven total successes for the king and Shiva against John, which typically would look like a lot to come back from. But here's where this gets interesting. John has a white as his base melee, two more white because of that felling axe, and then his special rule says tank, whereas if he's outnumbered two to one, we're going to add an extra white to his melee dice. So John is rolling four white dice. So John rolls a five, and that means he's going to take two wounds, one from Ezekiel and one from Shiva. Both of them have the sharp special rule, so now we can roll the 50-50 die to see if they inflict extra wounds. So we'll start out with Ezekiel, and on a badge, he will deal one extra wound. And now for Shiva, same thing, badge equals an extra wound. Alright, so Ezekiel and Shiva deal two wounds, outright from the successes, 
and then Shiva gets the extra wound because of her sharp claws, dealing three total wounds to John, which is enough to take him out of the game. So that was completely unexpected, which actually leaves Ezekiel a clear path to get around here to those survivors. So the saviors are going to have to regroup, get back on that side of the board. Before we finish out the second turn, we'll roll for these prone walkers. All right, so we'll start with the walker in the suit. And now the old man walker. We have up the threat by one to five, still in low threat. And we're going to go ahead and start turn three with Negan and his two blue dice. This time around, we're going to go ahead and move Lucille six times. Which is going to leave us right where we started. All right, so just like last turn, we're going to have Negan against Maggie. So blue and two white against two red in defense. And we have the exact same result as we did in turn two. So Maggie is going to take no wounds. And initiative is back over here with Ezekiel and his team. So we're going to start out by having Shiva run a little interference for the king here. So we're going to get her to run around the back side of the RV and try and get over there in Laura's face. So using the beast special rule, Shiva is able to run 10 inches and almost make it all the way over here to Laura. That move is going to go ahead and cause noise, which is going to pull the closest walker into her which is still going to continue to benefit her as that walker is going to move into contact with Lara. So we'll move over to Dwight now. Again, he has to take a shot at the closest survivor to him, which is going to be Heath because he's right next to him. So we'll go ahead and take a shot at him. So Dwight rolls his blue and white with his shot here. Against Heath, who has a white as defense. So Dwight using his first action to take a shot at Heath has now knocked him prone. He's going to use his second action to run up and engage him in melee combat. Well, not quite a run. Just a tiny little sneak. All right, so over to Ezekiel. Sheba having done her part and ran over there to distract everyone else, he is now going to make a run action down there towards Rick and his group, which is going to put him just outside of this team down here. And that move is going to create noise so we're going to go ahead and pull the closest walker who's over there in that green hat near Ezekiel. But during the course of his move, he's going to go ahead and clip Sherry and now be engaged with her. That's going to leave us with only Tara left to activate on the savior side. Now, my gut wants to take her and run her into combat to help out Dwight and take Heath out of this game because he's knocked prone. But remember, we're using the solo player rules to control these saviors. She's a runner. And all she wants to do is go around and pick up supply tokens. So she's going to go past them and come over here to the RV. So she's going to run here to the corner of the RV. And that's going to pull in the closest walker, who is the guy up here in the pantsuit that just stood back up, who's going to come down and engage her in combat. And that leaves us with Jesus left here to activate. So him seeing Heath in trouble, he's going to go over and try to help him out by engaging Dwight. And that is going to be all of our survivor actions for this turn. We can take another spin around the board here, and you can see that the few remaining walkers that are not engaged are well outside of any kill zones. So we're going to go right into our next event card, which will be the Rapture. So plus red to the threat, and all prone walkers immediately stand up. So we're going to add this many to the threat. Two. Bringing it up to... 7. And the second part of that card, we went ahead and stood up the single prone walker that we had left on the board. We're going to up the threat by 1 to 8 and go into the melee phase. So we're going to start out by having Sherry against one walker. So Sherry, we're going to have one red and one white against one purple for the walker. So we'll just go ahead and knock that guy back an engine prone. And now we'll move over to Lara against a single walker. Lara will also be rolling one white and one red against one purple. And so Lara's walker is also knocked back an engine prone. 
over to Terra against a single walker. And I know I've said it a bunch of times, but Terra is a runner. And with the solo rules, runners only defend in combat. So she has a blue as her base defense, and she's going to be rolling that against a purple attacking walker. And she has no problem defending herself there, so we move that guy back an inch, leave him standing. And now we come around her to Dwight against Jesus and Heath. Alright, so in this combat we have Heath who is prone, Jesus who is standing, and Dwight who is standing. So we're going to have Dwight attack Heath, who has to defend, and then Jesus attack Dwight, who will have to defend himself. So we're actually going to start out by having Jesus attack Dwight, because Ezekiel's team has initiative. So we're going to choose to start it that way. So Jesus, blue and white, against a single white for Dwight. So this will be Jesus' attack. And now Dwight defending. So after that, Dwight's going to take one point of damage, leaving him with two left. And at the end of this, he's going to be knocked prone because Jesus has the stun special rule whenever he successfully lands an attack. And now we're going to have Dwight against Heath. So Dwight is going to be attacking with a red and Heath defending with a white. And after all that combat, Dwight's not able to finish off Heath, and it looks like nap time on the side of the board because everyone is prone. That's going to be all of our melee combat. We're going to go ahead and roll for the prone walkers and see if they stand back up here. So this will be for the walker in the green hat. And now the walker with no shirt. Turn four, threat is up to nine. You can see there behind Glenn, how close Ezekiel is getting to freeing all of these guys. So let's go ahead and see who Negan is going to take a swing at this time. So we'll go ahead and move Lucille over three. And we're going to go ahead and take a swing at Michonne. So Negan comes up with five successes and the headshot, which means we're going to add in an extra white die. So Negan comes up with six total successes. Michonne's going to be rolling two red as her defense. And six wounds is unfortunately enough to go ahead and remove Michonne from play. Alright, so after that, we're going to come out here to start out with the Saviors, because they have initiative this turn, and we're going to go to Lara this time to start out. And remember, Lara is playing the scenario objective, which is to keep Ezekiel's team from getting into contact with Rick's group. So Lara's going to turn around, and she's going to take a shot at Ezekiel. Alright, so for Lara's shooting, she's going to have a blue as her base shooting, and then she's going to be armed with 357 Desert Eagle which has a 12-inch range, is going to add another blue to her shooting. So she's going to be rolling two blue, and Ezekiel, in defense, will also have a blue die. Now, Lara's handgun has a laser sight mounted on it. So what we're going to do after rolling it, we're going to roll the 50-50 die, and on a badge, we're going to add an extra red to that. So we'll start out by rolling her two blue dice. And she comes up with four and a headshot. So now we'll roll the 50-50 die for her laser sight. She's not going to get to add in the extra red. And now for Ezekiel's defense, we're going to roll the blue die for him. So Laura puts up four successes. Ezekiel puts in one. So we're going to do three points of damage plus one additional for the headshot. So four total points of damage to Ezekiel. And we're going to roll now to see if Laura's gun has ammo inside of it still. And she's going to be out of ammo. So Laura, with a great round of shooting, puts up four wounds against Ezekiel, leaving him with just one. And we're going to go ahead and put that black marker down next to her so we know she's out of ammo. 
Now the single player rules say that marksmen have silencers on all of their rifles and they don't have to worry about ammo checks. Doesn't say anything about tacticians, so we're going to go ahead and say that Lara is subject to running out of ammo and she's going to create mayhem, which is going to up the threat by 1 to 10 and we're going to pull in any walker within 10 inches of her, which is actually going to bring a walker into contact with Tara and then another walker into contact with Sherry. So hopefully that move is going to play out and be worthwhile because we just stripped those two of their actions. For her second action, she's now going to go and charge into Ezekiel to try and take him out with her second remaining action. So she sprints over and comes into contact with Ezekiel and now he's not going to be able to move over and touch those guys to activate them his turn, which should give Negan another swing at them in the next go around. And now for over here, we're going to come around to Jesus and we're going to have him come over and just jump on top of Dwight who is prone. So all we have to do is beat his defense and combat. And now with all of the saviors tied up, so no one else has actions on their team, we're gonna come over here to Shiva. And you know that she can't let someone do that to the king. So she is going to go over and engage Lara in combat. And believe it or not, that just leaves us with Heath left to activate. So for his first action, we're gonna have him stand up. And then for his second action, he's going to go over and engage Sherry. So she'll be facing not just that walker, but also Heath in combat. And it winds up just being a sneak. Not that there are any walkers to be drawn in by any noise. Although if we come back over here to Shiva for a minute, she did run, which is going to create noise. And the walker there, just on the other side of the camper, is within 10 inches. So we're going to go ahead and move him into contact with the camper right over to here. It's going to be all of our survivor actions. There's no one within any kill zones, so we're going to jump straight ahead to our next event card. And our next event card is Judgment Day. So plus one to the threat. We are going to be up to 11 now in medium threat. So draw another event card, resolve it, and then roll the 50-50 die. On star, we're going to start the event phase all over again. All right, so next event card, Drawn to Chaos. So again, plus one to the threat, up to 12, still in medium. And we're going to have white walkers enter play from each table edge. Alright, so from each table edge. One walker. And now for the second part of the card, we're going to roll the 50-50 die. And on a blank, we're going to go ahead and start the round over again because blanks are bad. Badges are good. So badge is we just carry on like normal. So back out here to our table, you can see we brought on one walker from each side and we put them right in the middle. So we got the green shirt walker here. Got the lady in the skirt again over here. The gray shirt on this side. And then even back here on Negan's side of the board, we've got this guy coming out of the tree line. So event card done, we're going to up the threat by 1 to 12 and go into the melee phase. And we're going to start out here with Tara against one walker. So we're going to have one walker attack Tara, which will be rolling a purple die. And then Tara will be defending by rolling a blue. So Tara goes ahead and defends herself. We move that walker back an inch and leave him vertical. Now we're going to come over to Jesus against a prone Dwight. So Dwight is prone, which means he only gets to defend in combat, which he's going to choose to do anyway because the white die of defense is better than the red melee die. But he has two wounds left. If Jesus is able to just beat him at all in combat here, he's going to be removed from the board. So Jesus attacking here is going to be rolling a blue and a white. So Jesus rolls a three. And now Dwight in defense is going to roll one white. So Jesus manages to beat Dwight in combat there. And we're going to move him back an inch and Dwight becomes a prone walker because we didn't get the headshot. Now we're going to go over to Sherry. So Sherry's going to be fighting one standing walker and then she's got Heath right there behind her. And again, here we're going to have Heath with four red dice, which are re-rollable, plus one purple for the walker. And then Sherry is going to go ahead and she's going to try to attack too. So we're going to roll Heath and the walker first. And now just to try to pile on and get the Yahtzee, we're going to see if we can reroll that red die and get another headshot. That's okay. 
All right, and in return, Sherry will have a red base and a white for her hatchet. So Heath and the Walker have no problem getting rid of Sherry as they put up eight total wounds and we could have had more. We didn't even roll for the sharp part of Heath's Gator Pro. Doesn't matter. It's a ton of wounds. And our last combat this round, we're going to have Ezekiel and Shiva against Lara. So we'll see how she does here. All right, so Lara in combat here would love to use that gun to take another shot. But remember, she is out of ammo now. So what we're going to do is have her try and attack both of these guys because that's the best she can do. We'll roll her first. She's going to have a red and a white because she's carrying a tire iron. So Lara puts up two and a headshot. I don't think it's going to be enough to stop the king and Shiva, but we'll see. So we're going to roll for Ezekiel first because we're looking to see if we can get that headshot. He's going to have two red and one white. But don't forget, Ezekiel has that tiny little knife with him, so what we're going to do is use the dual wield and re-roll that red that was a blank. There's that headshot that we were looking for, so now we get to add in an extra red to this. So Ezekiel winds up putting up five total wounds, so now we're going to go ahead and roll for Shiva with her red and blue. So just between those two rolls right there, we've got seven total wounds, plus the one extra for the headshot against Lara, who's only put up two. That's plenty enough wounds to go ahead and remove her from play. So Ezekiel and Shiva are just proving to be a wrecking crew, and you can see they've got their sights set on Negan now. And at the end of the turn here, we've got a couple of prone walkers, so let's go ahead and roll and see if any of these guys stand back up. So this will be for Walker Dwight. and the prone walker near Heath. All right, so at the start of turn five, the threat has moved up to 13, and you can see that Lucille is not pointing at anyone anymore because someone is missing. So now let's go ahead and roll and see where she lands at this time. Now we're gonna go ahead and move her three spaces. And now we'll see if the third time is the charm against Maggie. So, Negan against Maggie for the third time. Oh, he's mad now. So we add in an extra white die. And let's see what her defense is going to be. So six successes for Negan, one for Maggie. Five wounds is enough to remove her from play as well. And so after that, we're going to come around here to Ezekiel and his team to start out the action phase. So we're going to have Ezekiel use his first action to use his kingly ability, and we're going to try and lower the threat down. So reducing the threat by a blue die, we are going to drop it by two. Back down to 11. And then with his second action, he is going to move up into contact with Glenn, thus activating all of Rick's team who will now become playable. But with that, that also makes Negan a playable character, and the rules say that he's going to lash out one more time at the character he's currently facing, which at this point is nobody. We can't let him off the hook without hitting someone before Negan becomes playable. So let's go ahead and roll and see who we're gonna hit one more time. So this will be the last time that we're gonna roll for Lucille here. And now we're gonna go and move her six times. And we're going to finish it out just like we started with one more whack at Glenn. So solid roll by Negan there, putting up six successes. I don't think Glenn has a chance. We're going to go ahead and roll for his defense anyway. And there very fittingly, Glenn has been removed as well in Negan's last angry rage. So we go ahead and take in Lucille off the board there, and Negan is now a full playable character. So what we're going to do with him is he has to move towards the closest survivor and engage them, which for him is going to be Carl. So we're going to go ahead and take Negan and move him over. And now that we've got all of Rick's team as playable characters, you know that he's not going to stand there and let Negan come over into Carl. 
So Rick is going to come over and try and help out his son in melee. So now we come to Terra, and Terra again wants to search that supply token that's on top of the RV there. Unfortunately, there is a walker in contact with the RV, so she's going to move around, go into contact with him, and hopefully defend and push him away so she can search that in her next action. And then for our survivors, we've got Shiva over here who has just been unstoppable this game. We're going to see if she can keep that streak going, and we're going to get her to run all the way around the RV here to go over there and get in contact with Terra. She can do that because she's a beast and she can run 10 inches because of that rule. So Shiva makes it all the way around the RV there, which is gonna pull in the closest walker to her. And we wind up with this. We've got a couple of survivors left over here. We still have Jesus and Heath uh, around a couple of walkers. They're not gonna be too concerned with them. They're gonna wanna get rid of Terra, thinking that Rick and Ezekiel and them guys can take care of Negan down there. So we're going to take them and split them off and have them chase after Terra. So starting with Jesus, he's going to make an 8-inch run action to get out here, which is going to draw the attention of this walker. All right, so for Heath, Heath is going to have a change of heart, and he's actually going to come down here and try and take out Negan. So we're going to measure this out, have him move 8 inches to come down and get in contact with them. So Heath comes and slides in next to Rick. And because of that noise, we still got this walker down here in the tree line that came onto the board because of that event card earlier. We're gonna go ahead and move him, and he's gonna wind up bumping in the Negan. So our last survivor to activate this turn is poor little Sophia, who has now watched both of her parents be beaten to death by Negan. She has nothing left to do but panic. So let's roll and see what she does. And Sophia is going to... And Sophia gets to take one action after rolling the question mark. So, what is she going to do? She's gonna trigger her dark side, and she's gonna sneak a couple inches and then get a good look at what happens to Negan down here. And after Sophia, that is gonna be all of our survivor actions for this turn. So it's not looking very good for the saviors at this point. Let's go into what may be our final event card. We are getting some new events here. So this time we have Drawn to Conflict. So we are in medium threat, so we're going to take each player and place kill zone template with its center within 6 inches of any table edge, but not within impassable terrain. There must be no survivors under the template. Uh, the player then rolls to see how many walkers are placed under the template depending on the current threat. So we are in medium, so we're going to bring on a white amount of walkers. So let's go ahead and pick this corner right back here, and we're going to roll a white die now. And with the help of a fancy transition, we're now going to place one walker where this template used to be. And I know I didn't check kill zones before I went into that event card, but I did check it off camera, and the walker in the red shirt is just outside of Jesus' kill zone. So he's not going to move into contact with him. All right, so melee combat, up the threat by one, back to 12. And we have to unfortunately split this combat out here, so we're, we're going to wind up looking like So we're now going to have Shiva against one walker and Terra against one walker. And we're going to start with Shiva. So Shiva, red and blue against a purple for one walker. So we're going to go back and engine prone. And now for Terra. Terra is defending with a blue against a purple for the walker. So I've been waiting for the entire game to use this. Terra is also armed with Interceptor Body Armor, which is going to allow her to remove one white die worth of damage. So now we'll go ahead and roll to see if this makes any difference. So Terra needs to roll at least a one for her body armor. So Terra needed a one there with her body armor to not take any damage. The walker had rolled a bite. Will the body armor stop a bite? I don't know. We're going to say that she takes no damage, but she's still bitten. Let me know in the comments if that's right. And now for our last combat, we're going to have Negan against one walker, Carl, Rick, and Heath. Alright, so there's no way in the world that Negan is going to defend himself. So we're going to swing with all we got with Lucille here. So, one blue and two white. So Negan only manages to roll four successes there. Now we're going to, have to individualize these rolls because there's so many dice going. We're going to start out with Heath and his four red dice. And 
and they're re-rollable. So let's go ahead and re-roll at least two of them. All right, so Negan's not looking like he's in too bad of a shape here, despite how many people he's fighting. So now for Rick and Carl. Rick is going to have two red as his melee, and he is unarmed. And then Carl has a red as his base, and he has the Vengeful Special Rule, which says he adds a red die to all attacks against saviors. So we're going to have four red dice in total for Rick and Carl. Alright, so all rolling done down here. That whole team winds up inflicting seven total successes plus a headshot against Negan. Negan rolls four successes, so that's three wounds plus one, four total wounds, still leaving Negan with two left. So after all our combat, we still have two prone walkers now and Tara, who was bitten in that combat. So we're going to go ahead and roll for them. All right, and we'll start out with the prone walker over there near the shipping containers. The prone walker that Shiva just knocked down. And Terra's bite. And we'll say it again. Badge is good and it does not spread. Blank is bad and she takes a wound. Threat's been up by 1 to 13. We are at the start of turn 6. Starting out this time with Terra, who wants to search that supply token. So we're going to go ahead and have her do that because that walker is no longer in contact with it. And inside the RV, we find nothing. So now for Terra's second action, she's going to want to go over and search one of the two remaining supply tokens on the board, which is underneath this billboard over here. So run action over to it, which is going to bring in the punk rock walker over into contact with her. And for the survivors, Shiva is going to, of course, want to follow her over there. So she's going to run around to get behind Terra and bring in that fat walker into contact with her as well. Negan down here still has to move in contact with the closest survivor to him. This time though, we're going to play it smart. Heath is closest, but we're going to go around and get behind Heath in combat and wind up back here. All right, we've only got the good guys left to activate here, so let's just go ahead and get all of them out of the way. Rick is going to go and move into contact with Negan along with Carl, so we wind up with those guys looking like that. And we're going to go down and bring the king into contact with them this time as well. And back out here to Jesus. He is just within 8 inches of Terra. So we're going to go ahead and have him make an 8 inch run over to get in contact with her. And bringing in the closest walker to him. Leaving us again back here with poor little Sophia in the middle of the board. And you know she's going to panic. So let's go ahead and see what she does. So she gets to make one quiet action. So another sneak move. This time we're going to go closer to the RV. And again, survivor actions being done. We're going to go look at some kill zones. And you can see by swinging the board around here, the only one maybe close is the one down here in front of Heath. Which he is. So he slides over in contact with Heath. Now we'll go to our event card. And we have Surrounded. So plus one threat up to 14. We are officially in high threat. Player with initiative must choose one standing survivor, friend, or fro, and place the kill zone over that model. Blue walkers enter play and placed at the edge of the kill zones. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so blue walkers coming into play. Sorry, Sophia. These kids are not there to play with you. Threat is increased by 1 up to 15, and we are well into high threat now. Go on ahead and split off these combats. So we'll go and start with Heath against one walker. So Heath takes care of him, and now we'll go right to Negan against Rick, Carl, and Ezekiel. So again, Rick and Carl, four red dice between the two of them. And Ezekiel is two red and white. And we're going to choose to reroll one of the reds. So not bad. Seven total successes again. Let's see what Negan can do. So 
So Negan tries hard, but he winds up succumbing to the amount of wounds that all three of them are able to deal. And Negan comes back as a prone walker. Walker Ronnie. And over here we have lots and lots of individualized combats. So let's go ahead and start with Terra against one walker. Terra defending. Shoves him back one. We'll go over to Jesus. So Jesus attacking. Blue and white against one walker. And we go back one in prone. And we'll finish this side with Shiva. And Shiva against one walker. And we just wind up with prone walkers everywhere. And at the end of the melee phase, we have prone walkers all over the place, including prone Negan back here. So let's go to the end phase and roll to see who gets back up. All right, so the walker that Jesus knocked prone. And the walker that Shiva knocked prone. Walker Negan. And finally, Terra's Infection. Start of turn 7. Threat is up to 16. Terra is the last remaining savior on the board. Negan fell in the last turn. Terra's down to her last wound, and she's bitten. So this may be the last turn here. We're going to start out by taking Jesus, and he's going to move into contact with her. And staying on the side of the board, Shiva is also going to move over into contact with Terra. Back here on this side, we're going to have Ezekiel run up there and take on one of the Walker children, trying to help poor Sophia. So we're going to stop just short and then pull him into contact with the noise. Heath is now going to do the same thing, just to the other Walker child. Again, stopping short and pulling her in with the noise that he made while he's running. And that leaves us with Rick and Carl down here. We're going to move into contact with the prone Walker Ronnie. All right, that was quick. So that's all of our survivor actions. Let's go look at some kill zones. And a lot of kill zone movement up here. So we actually have Jesus, who's going to be split off into combat with one walker. And then Tara is going to be in combat with Shiva and two walkers. Before we do that, I totally forgot to activate Sophia. So let's come back around and at least roll her panic die to see what happens. So Sophia is going to run. And in the direction where there are no walkers, it's probably closer to Rick and Carl down there. So she's going to run down there. And there are no walkers within 10 inches of her to activate. So she ends her move down there. And now we can go to our event card. And we have Thunderstorm. So plus one to the threat, up to 17. Sudden Storm breaks out. You immediately discard all gory clothing if in play. While the storm is in effect, survivors cannot shoot at a target more than 8 inches. Unless they roll the badge first. In the end phase, after rolling for prone walkers, remove one burning token. Start of each subsequent event phase. Roll to see if this goes away. Alright, so we've actually gone ahead and up the threat by 1 to 18, which is maximum on the threat tracker. So this will be our final turn. We're going to go ahead and finish out all of our combat. See if we can clear the board of the saviors here. So we're going to start on this side of the board with Rick and Carl against Walker Ronnie. So we get our four red dice for Rick and Carl. And we'll throw in one purple for the walker. I mean, just barely do they remove him from play there. So we'll go over to Heath against one walker. And Heath is able to remove her. And we'll finish out this side with Ezekiel. And so Ezekiel just goes and pushes him back one. Now come around to this side of the board and go to Jesus against one walker. And so we go back one in prone, and now we have Shiva and two walkers against Terra. So we're going to go ahead and roll for the two walkers and Shiva to start. Two walkers are going to roll three purples because of the walker outnumbering rule, and again Shiva has the red and blue. So we have an explosion of successes there, and some more headshots. And now for Terra in defense, her blue die. And the white die for her body armor. And it took a couple turns of chasing her around the board, but we finally inflict enough damage on Terra to go ahead and remove her from play. And this is our board after turn 7. 
we've reached max threat, but we've removed Negan from play. So Ezekiel and his team take no casualties, they make it across the board, and they are able to free Rick and his group of captives. However, not before Negan is able to remove Michonne, Glenn, and Maggie. So if you guys like this video, I want to thank Richard Stockdale for putting this scenario up on the Walking Dead Facebook. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss where we're going next, which is Woodbury. We're going to be playing through the entire Made to Suffer campaign. So if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, go back and watch them, get caught up to speed, and I'll see you guys in the next battle report.